Okay, so a lot of people could figure out this basic math problem. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. We have negative of absolute value of negative 9 plus 17. And of course, we want to see what this is equal to. And we don't want to use our calculator, but here is the problem. Although a lot of you out there are going to be able to uh, answer this correctly, you don't really understand what's going on, and this is going to cause problems later down the line when you continue to study absolute value. So that's a little bit of a hint what I'm going to be talking about in this particular video. But if you know how to solve this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to explain step by step what's really going on in terms of the solution of this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you're struggling in math or if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go to take a look at the answer again. We have negative or the opposite of the absolute value of negative nine plus 17. Uh, what is this equal to? Well, the answer is negative eight. All right, well, hopefully uh, most of you out there got this answer. Now, if you didn't get this answer, don't despair. I'll show you exactly what's going on. But uh, if in fact you did this correct, whether you fully understand this or not, this is certainly cause for celebration. So let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%. You know, as a teacher, you just love putting 100% and 80 plus. It's such a great part of the job. And multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that you are a certified professional expert in the field of absolute value. Okay, and that's what we're talking about here. That's what these bars are. But, uh, well, we'll see if, in fact, you do have that knowledge of absolute value. That would make you a certified professional expert. But uh, I'll explain this in just one second. But uh, let's go ahead and actually get into the solution so we could just first understand how to get the answer. Okay, so first things first. Uh, one, we have to recognize first, or what we need to do is recognize what kind of problem we're dealing with. Okay, so these bars, these are vertical bars. This in, uh, indicates absolute value. Okay, so that's what we call this in mathematics. And this is different than uh, parentheses. So it's not like negative parentheses, negative 9 plus 17 parentheses like that, or brackets. These symbols uh, mean, uh, you know, a lot in mathematics. In other words, they're uh, very specific, if you will. So you don't want to confuse um, uh, negatives, um, or I'm sorry, uh, parentheses with absolute value. And this is important. And let me go ahead and just make a quick, and something just kind of came to mind here. I want to kind of uh, really make sure you understand this. So if I had two times X plus three. Now, for those of you that know some basic algebra, uh, you would say, okay, I can use the distributor property to go two times X, uh, and that is correct. And then two times three would be six. So two times X plus three is equal to two X plus six. Now that's the, uh, the illustration of the distributive property. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up because uh, something just popped in my brain and I said, you know what? There's a common error that I see a lot in absolute value and it goes something like this. So let's suppose I have two absolute value X plus three, another absolute value bar like so, okay? Now, you can see here that when we are dealing with parentheses, you can use the distributive property, but here, you cannot, okay, this is what we call an absolute value function. So you cannot do this two times x uh, plus uh, two times three, six absolute value like that. This is a no-no, okay? So I uh, just want to kind of, you know, put that out there. Just kind of came to mind, you know, when you've seen as many math errors as I've um, not only have seen as a teacher, you know, grading, you know, through the years, uh, test, homework, quizzes, you know, of course, I made all these mistakes as well. So when I can um, highlight a common error, uh, that is a good way to learn. Like, this is not what we're talking about, right? So what we are talking about is absolute value function, all right? So this means do something 
with what's inside of this. Okay, so again, the topic here is absolute value, and I really, really wanted to uh, distinguish this is not like parentheses. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Well, the first thing we need to do is figure out what's going on inside here. We've got to clean up uh, whatever numeric operations we need to do inside the, of the absolute value. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we have negative absolute value negative 9 plus 17. And when we add negative 9 and 17, uh, we have a positive 8. Okay, so this is equal to the opposite or negative of the absolute value of a positive 8. Okay, so at this point, we need to figure out what the absolute value of positive 8 is. And I think most of you uh, probably know the answer. Now, if you're not familiar with absolute value, absolutely, okay, no pun intended, must understand this concept. This is a, a really uh, important basic math concept, and it's going to be all over the place, especially for those of you that are going to get into algebra. But let's go ahead and get into this right now. So let, let me give you a quick explanation, okay, just to tell you the answer. So the absolute value of a positive 8 is equal to 8. Okay. Now, most students uh, think of the absolute value as, well, uh, if I take the absolute value of a number like 8, the answer is just the positive version of that uh, uh, number, right? The absolute value of positive 8 is 8, and the absolute value of negative 8 is also a positive 8. Okay, so a lot of students uh, think, oh, okay, when I take the absolute value, it's just uh, whether it's positive or negative, the answer is always going to be positive. And um, essentially, that is correct, but that is not really what's going on here, right? That kind of lends to my title, although a lot of you can get this right. You don't really understand the concepts, and that's going to be detrimental later down the line. So I'll explain the concepts of absolute value, the, uh, kind of a basic introduction to this in just one second. But let's go ahead and finish up the problem. Okay, so here we had uh, the negative or the opposite, you know, when you see a negative sign like this, you can I think of it as, as a negative, obviously, or the opposite of this. So we have the opposite of the absolute value of uh, a positive 8. We know the absolute value of positive 8 is 8. Now notice, now I have this in parentheses. Okay, so we're done. Uh, we're e uh, Basically, what I'm trying to say here was we evaluated the absolute value function. Okay, so we took the absolute value of 8, and now we have a positive 8. So this is going to be the opposite of a positive 8 or a negative of a positive 8, which is negative 8. Now, a lot of you are saying, boy, you really kind of break this down, you know, almost like in too much detail. Well, I do this because uh, we need to understand the process of what's going on, you know, uh, in math. When you take a step, you know, you don't want to just say, oh, I could take this step, I could do this step. Well, there's always a reason or justification on going from here to here and here to here, okay? And the more you understand the kind of justification of each step you're doing in math, the better you're going to comprehend all the, you know, uh, concepts and principles. And that's really how you become very strong in mathematics. Okay, so now we're going to talk about really what's going on with absolute value. And um, again, some of you may know this, some of you may not, but all of you definitely need to understand this. And I'm going to explain this in just one second. Before we do that, though, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, don't even think about it. Just hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. You have no idea of the positive impact this has on my channel. So I would be very, very grateful if indeed if you did that. And uh, my facial expression will be something like that. If you are a subscriber right now, thank you so much. And for those of you that are uh, new to my channel, you'll find a couple thousand videos that I'm posting basically every day from basic math to advanced math, not calculus, and everything in between. And my objective is to try to explain math in a very clear and understandable way. So that subscribe or your subscribership, uh, if you will, you know, is for me, I look at that as, hey, I've gained a new student. So I wouldn't have, uh, you know, my, I want to have my classroom, <laughs> my virtual classroom, right, as big as possible because I just love teaching math. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to the prom. Okay, so we already figured out what the answer to this particular problem is, but here is kind of the main point of this video. So we were talking about the absolute value of 8, right? So we um, already decided that the absolute value, we already figured out that the absolute value of a positive 8 is 8. That is correct. 
and the absolute value of a negative 8 would also be a positive 8. But why is that, right? You don't want to just say, oh, yeah, the absolute value is that, that, that thing that when you, um, you know, have to do it, you just take the positive version of the number. Now, although uh, technically you're going to end up with the right answer, we need to understand the definition of absolute value. Okay, so if you know what the definition of absolute value is before I tell you, of course, I got a little bit of a hint right here, go ahead and put that into the comment section. Probably a lot of you do know uh, the definition of absolute value, and that is fantastic. But uh, let's go ahead and just review what it is here real quick. Okay, so absolute value, these little bars right here, is effectively um, asking a question, saying, hey, how far is this number from zero? Okay, how far a number is from zero, or what is the distance a number is from zero on a number line? Okay, so the absolute value of, of a positive eight, we're saying, hey, eight, how far are you from zero on a number line? The absolute value of negative eight, we're saying, hey, negative eight, how far, what's your distance away from zero on a number line? So we can kind of see this visually here. Here is eight, and here is negative eight, and here is zero. Okay. Now, some of you are, uh, might be a little bit confused, but let's not be confused. So absolute value is the distance a number is from zero on a number line. Now, you could think of distance as, let's say you had a tape measure or a ruler, right? This is how we measure distance, okay? So you might be a little bit confused because of there's a negative eight here or eight. But let's suppose I gave you this on a piece of paper and I said, hey, how far is zero from eight? Well, you would measure the distance, and zero to eight is eight units. Okay, it would be eight units away. All right, that is the distance. So from here to here, it's eight units. But guess what? From zero to negative eight, it is also the same uh, distance away. It's eight units. Okay, so in mathematics or in science, typically we're going to measure distance or displacement in positive units. Okay, so this distance is the same as this distance. Okay, Edwards, again, it's going to be positive because distance um, or displacement, again, is typically in positive units. So this is just a quick illustration um, of the uh, definition of the absolute value. And this is what you really need to understand because although we're doing a basic absolute value problem like this, later down the line, you will do more interesting absolute value problems like something like this okay so this is an absolute value equation you can have these type of things you can have things that look like uh, i'm just making stuff up of course uh absolute value inequalities like so so you know there's a lot you need to know about absolute value you need to work to know how to work with basic absolute value expressions equations inequalities you got to know how to graph absolute value on and on and on but don't get overwhelmed uh when it comes to anything in mathematics, when you're like, oh, that's a lot to learn. No, you just want to take it one step at a time. But even if you understand what I'm saying here, that's great. And that is my objective is to try to give you some clear and understandable instruction. But for you to really kind of um, have this as your own personal math skill, you need to practice. Okay. So if you need additional help with absolute value, I have a ton of uh, extra videos on my YouTube channel on this topic, but I probably recommend checking out like my pre-algebra or algebra one course. I'll leave uh, links to those in the description of this video. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.